Our first speaker this morning is Mr. William Hausman, who brings to our midst a distinguished career in journalism, who will speak on the subject of environment. Mr. Hausman is president of in the Environment League, Incorporated, editor of the Environment Monthly, consultant to the National Endowment for the Arts and Publications Consultant to the National Council of Architectural Registration Boards, Washington, D.C. He was educated at Drake University and the University of Iowa. In addition, Mr. Hausman has been a researcher, writer, and editor for such publications as Look Magazine, Life, House and Garden, and Parade magazines. He will talk to us this morning on the uses and misuses of people in architecture. Mr. William Hausman. I just, yeah, I better. I'm going to have to use both. Oh, dear. Don't worry. Somebody... No, 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 don't worry about that. No problem. That's all right, no problem. These two are out of order. And this is the order they fell in. I'm, I, mean, I, are mine, I can't tell you. Yours. <laughs> <laughs> Never used them. Um, thank you, John. <clears throat> Welcome, survivors. Um, I think as um, <laughs> symposiums move along toward the fag end of the proceedings, the fag end speakers tend to be tempted to sum up. Uh, Paul, I'm not going to sum up, but I have seen enough of this symposium to feel compelled to thank Dean Sappenfield and Marv Rosenman, and I dare say dozens of other stalwarts, judging from the uh, flying circus you have created here, a fantastic environment. Let me thank you as a speaker for having been invited here. It's been a great experience. Uh, I had thought of changing the title of my talk, my remarks, performance. Um, after uh, talking with Marv Rosenman at about the semifinal point of the uh, pre-planning, I hadn't really appreciated until that time that we were going to be talking about world leisure environments. Uh, I have reconsidered, and it seems fair enough that we should stick with the uses and misuses of people in architecture, because whereas Schools of architecture, institutes, foundations, corporations have all expressed growing ambivalence as to what the man-made environment consists of, uh, the built environment. We can't even agree on our disagreements. Uh, uh, I still like architecture as the experience <clears throat> people in all places and all circumstances um, are expo uh, exposed to <clears throat> as they go through <clears throat> the modern life that we lay out for them. Uh, George Nelson is well known for reminding people quite eloquently at every chance he gets that um, everything we experience is designed uh, in one fashion or another, or it is designed by um, omission. Uh, the manhole covers, the mailboxes, the aluminum siding on development houses, everything is designed. So it does rather appeal to me in this context to uh, think of how we use our users and misuse our users in the leisure environment as well as architecture generally, wherever people invest money in attracting people for one motive or another. Uh, <clears throat> After the wonderful kicky slide sound and light show we had last night, 
I'm a little bit hesitant to show you my tacky wares this morning, but I'm going to do it anyhow. Um, I would have to call it visual pollution. I'm going to plow ahead for two reasons. One is that it concerns advertising, and um, I don't think there's any way to um, um, ignore advertising as a crunching factor in the use and misuse of people in a leisure environment. The other reason is that the simple exhibits you will see uh, tend to sharpen what will be my focus this morning, and that is one that Tim Burton touched on uh, very appropriately, uh, diversity. Uh, my approach lacking Tim's scholarship will be conspicuously different, but um, diversity is, I think, uh, of fundamental importance to everyone. So the quickest way, I think, to get to the business at hand is to dim the lights and let me uh, go back and fumble with the overhead light and see how we do. <clears throat> um, I suppose uh, yeah. my least presumption would be showing you pages out of magazines because I've spent most of my life in that particular vineyard. Uh, so um, I would hope that my way of looking at magazines will be of some use to you, if not my way of handling mechanical devices. Um, as I promised, the quality is lacking, but certainly the content is there. I, I've sat like a kennel dog the last day, uh, leashed to the house while the neighboring free-roaming animals came over and stole my dinner. I can't, I'm astounded that no one has uh, brought to your attention the most profoundly revolutionary intrusion on man's leisure in, in history. Indeed, I, I do think that McLuhan was right and is right, and that um, uh, his, his revelations or his observations are akin with Sir Isaac Newton's as to the impact of that particular device. You notice the beer cans uh, tipped over on the floor. Um, that surely is the enemy of di diversity, if it is nothing else. Uh, you perhaps saw that in uh, a New Yorker of a week or two ago. It's also noteworthy that whereas I didn't put this page in properly, uh, um, the uh, ancestor of Mr. J.C. Miller, a Josiah Miller, uh, lived to be something like 85, and I see that J.C. was born in 1936 and passed on in 1973, which was a short and not altogether happy life, I suspect. Can you move it down that way a little, just a little? That, that way. Okay, it doesn't matter if you. Um, <clears throat> when I left um, the so called general magazines and went to House and Garden magazine, I was puzzled by something called the classified section of advertising. Uh, I now understand about classified ads, and I would like to share with you a point of information that perhaps can uh, allow you to read magazines with a, a small but important new insight. Uh, I have a red arrow pointed to the corner there because I've been in love with satin sheets as they appear in classified sections for the last 20 years. Uh, it's, it's been a confounding affection though because for the life of me I could never understand why Satin sheets at 27.50 a pair, they're of acetate, I read in the small type, um, are even considered for advertising in a super slick magazine like House and Garden or House Beautiful or Vogue or Harper's Bazaar. 
I finally discovered why this um, advertiser so persistently chooses such an improbable vehicle for sell selling his wares. He knows about diversity. He is not trying to sell House and Garden's million subscribers. He's trying to hook about 30 ladies in a beauty parlor who all their lives have wanted something like this. And there's no market research that will find his 30 ladies who somehow want some satin sheets. Now, if he sells 30 ladies, not 1 million ladies, who are House and Garden in one sense, in the traditional sense, if he sells 30, he pays for his ad and he makes a buck. And that makes him a very happy um, classified advertiser. Uh, so uh, suddenly one realizes that this is not house and garden at all. This is a marketplace for men who are looking for a diverse market and, and people who have the money to pay $27.50 for a pair of sheets. That uh, changes the perspective, I think. Uh, one more classified ad. Uh, if I can find it. Oh, there goes the ball game. Uh, we'll skip that classified ad, and I will. Uh, it's familiar to all of you, no doubt. No, I'm sorry. Here we go. Fine. Found. This has something to do with leisure. Uh, Um, I counted through this particular section of the classified ads in New York Times Magazine, and there were 24 tennis camps, Glenn, uh, selling their wares and selling their uh, first and second rate pros uh, as your genial host at uh, Camp uh, Gichigumi. Uh, uh, on the back of uh, this page, I believe, is another interesting classified ad uh, where, again, the people who paste up these ads for the Sunday edition well know the meaning of diversity and also the, the value of, um, of community of interest. On the back is a page essentially made up of, of um, uh, ads for camps appealing to overweight adolescent girls. Uh, that's very important to an overweight adolescent girl and her family to know. And that, to me, is an interesting aspect of diversity, which I submit ought to allow us to be a little more tolerant when we leaf through, through those pages that look so sleazy and tacky in our uh, slick magazines and newspapers. Um, then you always have to have the sublime to uh, offset. Uh-oh, down a little, I'd like to get the headline, uh, thank you. Why a $36,250 motor car makes sense during these trying times? <laughs> well, it makes a lot of sense to an ad agency uh, in looking around for a place to try and sell a Rolls Royce. Again, diversity is the key. And I'm all for it. Um, I think that uh, he, uh, there's a good chance that they may make a sale out of this ad in, uh, among the New York Times audience, in which case it will have been a very good investment. Imagine uh, selling one person and being satisfied that uh, you've, uh, you've really covered the market. <laughs> And they mean it. This magazine uh, takes uh, its uh, franchise very seriously. Uh, I, I remain forever astounded at the phenomenal, um, overwhelming commercial organized uh, industry known as the, the sports industry. And um, the copy here assures you that you're really, well, indeed, you are wasting a lot of time, I suppose, considering how long it takes to play, say, three rounds of golf on a long weekend. Uh, if you uh, don't get the most out of it, you, um, 
you are offending your own sense of, um, of your worth. So uh, uh, I, I begin to understand that while um, uh, it's a peculiar kind of diversity to people who don't want to make that investment in life, yet it's crucially important uh, to, uh, to the uh, dedicated duffer. And uh, again, the, it seems to me the very obvious lesson here, but one that we uh, overlook when we're rifle, rifling through our magazines, is that the, um, the importance of these new um, um, expanding uh, industries, service industries, uh, have many, uh, many uh, uh, piggyback uh, riders. And um, it's again in the good American tradition that um, if you know a guy who um, can use what I'm selling through his interest in what you're selling him, we will uh, form a lovely partnership and it uh, works very effectively. Then you see there are other applications in reaching these, these diverse uh, types. Uh, I don't know, I'm curious about the, can we push that on the, so we get the headline in? I'd like to meet the uh, copywriter on this ad because somewhere in his background he's, he's uh, had a good course in, um, in uh, creative crafts. Uh, it, uh, I'm not going to read all of what they do to this golf club, but you would swear that it was um, out of one of the, you know, the great uh, gil uh, gills of medieval times. Uh, <laughs> Hand whipped, hand banked, hand varnished, hand painted, hand gripped, hand trimmed, hand balanced. Among there are a lot of verbs there that I don't identify with golf at all. Uh, um, but uh, but again, it is seizing on a diverse group of people to convey an attitude that has a favorable connotation in an altogether different uh, milieu. Uh, we go to an antique store and all of these words have great meaning if we're looking at a fine piece of English furniture. But I think of, with a golf stick, that's pretty neat. This one doesn't need to, be, need to be elaborated on at all. I think it's a beautiful parlay of uh, commercial interests. And of course the sports uh, mystique. Now, I'm going to read you the caption. This is, we're switching into an editorial. Um, I don't know whether you've seen this, but there's a new um, envisaged uh, sport called rollerball. This appeared in Sports Illustrated. It is the 21st century, and war has been abolished by the corporations that rule the globe. But the people crave violence and find it in a game that posts the dead and maimed on the scoreboard as well as goals. A new movie that could spark a new sport. Just give you a quick look at the, the appearance of the ad. It's a combination of a roller derby and uh, motorcycle hill climbs and general mayhem. And uh, don't miss it next century. <laughs> there are a couple here in a row that uh, combine travel and, and our own sense of it insufficiency rather nicely, I think. Oh, I'll have to read you this headline too. Switzerland in Europe, Switzerland is the Europe you thought you were born too late to see. Um, I think that really in these days is an effective way of um, saying it's going, going, gone, and you'd better hurry. Um, and uh, maybe that is true. But if you can't go to Europe, well, don't fret about it. Instead of building an amusement park, we're building a little Europe. And this is Anheuser-Busch's new um, um, uh, knockoff of Disneyland. Uh, um, and um, here, of course, um, uh, we, the con context, it would seem to me, is that they are recognizing the um, abhorrent, abhorrent gap uh, called leisure in many middle-class homes and, um, and are filling it uh, with a, um, uh, 
increase, uh, increasingly non-diverse answer, uh, a cookie-cut uh, lesser Disney World so that everybody can experience the same vicarious um, blandness. It's called the old country. Oh, excuse me. And there's nothing I like better than a gamester. For example, wild and wonderful vacations are made in West Virginia. And uh, I hope a lot of people go to West Virginia because they don't have all of the advantages of Florida and Puget Sound and Cape Cod. Then uh, we trade on our vices and always have been very good at that in order to purify our motives. Your Jamaican adventure, adventure begins here, Tia Maria. These aren't notable, to, except that I don't think we often read ads in, or that is to say, unless you're going to a leisure um, conference, you don't uh, sensitize yourself to the springboard through which services and products are sold. And uh, Portugal, despite the fact that it seems to be coming unstuck at the moment, is still a great vacation at the right price. And they're probably right. Uh, Jet Set has always, uh, that's Grand Prix and VO, they go together. And um, uh, why not? <laughs> Add four guests, one duck, and serve but mainly have some grand manier. I, I don't know. I, I sometimes think that I, I'm utterly irrational when I read the smoking can be dangerous uh, <laughs> comment in the corner and all of the whole wholesome fun that's going on. Here we're polluting uh, one of nature's creatures. Can you see him? It's, you know, it's the black bear and the broken cigarette. This one is interesting to me. Uh, we all know um, of the um, power lawnmower, the little tractor that uh, usually have an overweight man riding. and cutting a 40-foot swatch of his front yard. Uh, well, he's made his impact because now uh, the ecology really isn't answering to his needs to ride the tractor. And so, as you can read, uh, the plantsmen have developed a new kind of grass that goes with his tractor. And uh, there's your leisure for you as a powerful incentive. I happen to know the entrepreneur who uh, built the, developed, designed, and built and is marketing the Yankee Barn. Uh, but, and he's a very clever man and uh, an interesting man. Uh, he certainly is appealing to um, uh, not only um, nostalgia, which never was, but um, a sense of leisure, which. Uh, uh, is can be customized or, or developed based on a new theme that maybe you hadn't thought of. So instead of buying what is essentially a tech-built kind of house, uh, it's panelized and it, your barn comes to your suburban lot on a truck uh, with various extras, the tack-on terrace and, and uh, dining area. But uh, basically, he's talking about creating your own barnyard and... Uh, and, and developing a lifestyle that is just that much different. And I suspect that economics are a factor here, too, because um, anyone who can buy a new house and put it on a desirable piece of land today uh, has to be appealed to um, at a rather higher level than 10 or 15 years ago when there was a glut of housing. So you have to work harder to get the idea of a barnyard sold, but it probably, again, in the diversity of marketing, uh, will 
pique some interest that wouldn't have been there before. Um, darn it. The, the head, this is a, an advertisement for a vinyl tile flooring, and the headline says, have a party on us. And um, again, I w during my time at House and Garden, I became very much aware of the um, overwhelming um, importance of entertaining uh, to both uh, men and women in um, upper middle class circumstances. Um, I, I think probably the, the, uh, the formal sit down dinner may be the nearest threat to ulcers among females of anything we have. And uh, so um, I believe that uh, women take seriously the, the tie in between their leisure activity, which just drives them up the wall, the entertaining, and the proper floor on which to spill the Bloody Marys. Um, and I guess the answer is, why indeed? Why would anybody? <laughs> Uh, how a Gen Air open house can close the sale. That's self-explanatory too, but without a uniquely American concept of leisure, it would, would be rather puzzling. Similarly, here, the Lark Backyard Bonanza. Buy one lark bargain item, get the accessories free, and we'll smoke up a storm. Um, we can see interesting uh, trends among the energy giants uh, and the uh, And the acknowledgement of, uh, of the breakdown in aesthetic experience in our country. Now, I don't think Exxon would appreciate this. They'd say I'm a cynic. But I do think that since they can sell all that they can lay their hands on, that's an inescapable uh, advertising strategy to uh, develop. As they don't have to generate interest in hitting the Great American Road any longer. Just hope you don't run out on the between the interstates. Similarly, um, uh, Exxon can afford to spend a great amount of money on urging people to stay home now for the very same reason. They don't need to push you out your front door to uh, drive 200 miles to the lake. They'd just as soon catch you um, uh, with old J.C. Miller there at the TV. Uh, this one is interesting, too, uh, uh, in an altogether different context. 35,000 and some retired people depend on pension checks from Bethlehem Steel, and Bob Jenkins is one of them. Well, I think each person can, can write his own meaning into that kind of an ad. Uh, we don't really know what, what uh, that does for Bob Jenkins' life. Um, none of the <laughs> statistics uh, indicate what shape he's in. And you notice the check is turned away, so we can't see what it reads. And that's all right, too. <laughs> but, uh, but it's very. Uh, powerful um, uh, leaning on the whole leisure um, concept of uh, addressing society. That concludes the Magic Lantern show. If we could have the lights, uh, please. I think he yeah, right. OK. I left my uh, note somewhere. Thank you. Let me do 
doing? Am I late? Okay. Um, I've been <clears throat> leaping through materials that have uh, by people in this country and abroad who have impressed me with their uh, perspective of this subject matter that we are all concerned with here today. And um, uh, I uh, came across the Canadian Kenneth Watt uh, uh, commenting on the importance of diversity just recently. He makes an interesting connection, for example, between diversity and preservation. Uh, he uh, says that when you make an argument for preserving anything, uh, you are, um, particularly anything rare, but really anything, you are arguing in disguise for um, diversity. Uh, and this is, uh, this is quite true, and uh, I, I think he's worth, uh, worth a comment. Uh, he says that... Um, If diversity breeds stability, then it is worthwhile for a government to regulate the rate at which different interest groups acquire wealth and power. Under constant, uh, undue concentration of power and wealth allows a small group of people to change the landscape to suit themselves, even though the change may not suit others. For example, wilderness mountaintops and tropical islands have been overdeveloped for second homes because prospective profits for developers were very large relative to the total cost for society. Costs were small for the developers because they were not equitably divided within the society. If something went sour with the development, the lots didn't sell after trees uh, were bulldozed, or if subsequent sewage and pollution control costs spiraled, then someone else, not the developer, absorbed the costs. Thus, the developer reaped a great gain from subsidizing, and someone else paid the price. Uh, given this situation, it is scarcely surprising that so much of the world is being destroyed or that diversity uh, is diminishing so rapidly. Uh, I'm glad it was um, Glenn McCaskey who spoke last night, because he uh, spoke quite eloquently to the same problem. Um, had um, any of um, hundreds of other de developers been invited to comment on recreation communities, it's quite possible that there might be a little, little bit of, um, of misunderstanding uh, at this moment. Uh, but it is basically true, I, I think, that again, in the diversity of merchandising our, uh, our lives and our leisure, uh, the developer is interested only in those he can successfully attract to buy into the scheme. Uh, and, and as Watt says, going beyond uh, Glenn's Im, uh, implied problems of last night, um, the holding of the ba bag, particularly in the Southwest, has become a very familiar and unfortunate experience. Uh, another man I think it's worth calling to your attention utterly unknown gentleman named Peter Van Dresser, who lives in a small um, Rocky Mountain town in northern New Mexico on the southern slope of the Rockies, El Rito. Uh, Peter Van Dresser uh, um, had a solar heated house in 1935, which he designed and built himself. Uh, he has um, also, uh, for at least as long, been appealing to society to uh, consider our country in terms of its water, natural watersheds. I think it's of some pertinence to the environmental design professionals to appreciate that here is a guy who was saying uh, 35 years ago, what's the sense of sending Wonder Bread from Phoenix to El Rito, or Santa Fe to uh, El Rito? What's the sense of sending plywood from Portland, Oregon to Portland, Maine, as happened so often in this country? Uh, what is the sense, indeed, both the ecologically and environmentally? 
Uh, it's Peter Van Dresser's notion, as well as um, uh, other um, uh, thoughtful men today, E.F. Schumacher, the British economist, is certainly another, whose book, Small is Beautiful, I commend to your library, if you haven't already read it. Um, these gentlemen uh, make a very strong case for diversity in, in, in the most uh, American sense, in the sense of self-reliance given um, a, a boundary in which you effectively operate as a human being. And um, uh, um, it, it is uh, uh, Van Dresser's estimate that we have about 60 natural watersheds in this country in which one can draw uh, a good deal of the day-to-day -day necessities of life. Uh, he's not suggesting um, a turning away from progress in any uh, rational form, nor is he denying that certain products can't be fabricated um, in the backyard with a hammer and saw. Um, however, the consequences of uh, turning away from self-reliance in the Emersonian sense, really, both in the head and in the hand, um, is um, overwhelming us. Uh, and uh, I, I thank um, Patrick uh, Van uh, Horsburgh this morning for calling to mind the name of Fraser Darling, the Scottish ecologist, who uh, did an interesting study worth noting on um, this question of self-reliance as it related to two virtually identical Scottish villages, one on either side of a long lock. Uh, a small um, blacktop road was um, opened up to uh, one of the villages, whereas the other remained basically um, at the end of a wagon trail. And in a remarkably short time, perhaps 10 years, the people who had the road were giving up all of the normal activities from baking bread to fixing flats to uh, um, uh, building their own houses and uh, had become virtual uh, on almost literal cripples of the uh, and dependence of the new products that were being brought into them. Um, Darling seeks to demonstrate that there is a happiness quotient attached here, too. And that is of pivotal importance to, uh, to all of us who are interested in designing a place where people uh, can retain a little bit of their serenity. But it, it seems um, increasingly apparent. Uh, God knows Cambodia. Cambodia is a classic case of a reasonably serene people who, uh, in the face of an alien experience, uh, simply cannot uh, cope, have not coped, and it's the, that's the ultimate tragedy. I pray that it stops there. Um, there is another um, remarkable um, man named George F. Kennan, whom I'd like to uh, quote. Uh, just uh, recently, um, he, um, his book written in 1954, uh, based on lectures at Princeton on foreign policy and where we should be going, uh, was, uh, was excerpted, uh, brief excerpts appeared in the New Yorker. Uh, Cannon was thinking in 1954 of where we ought to stand on foreign policy, and where he thought we ought to stand turned out to be a remarkable uh, platform. He said, one of the things I have in mind for pursuing a correct foreign policy for our own sake um, uh, is the manner in which we treat our natural environment here on this North American territory, 1954, foreign policy. I think we can no longer permit the economic advance of our country to take place so extensively at the cost of the devastation of its natural resources and its natural beauty. Another thing he worried about was our dependence on other countries for materials vital to the functioning of our economy. And he advised a, conscience, a, a conscious attempt to shape our relationships with other economies in all these matters 
in such a way that they have some stability and some firm foundation of mutual understanding and do not lead in the future to all sorts of crises and tensions and tragedies. Uh, I feel quite at home with you, uh, or at least I should hope I feel quite at home, when I uh, call to mind the whole Earth catalog. Uh, I, I think that's been one of the grace, greatest bridges uh, in the gap between generations to have come along in a while. And I'm going to conclude my rambling remarks with what I think is one of the neatest summaries of our dilemma and our opportunity, uh, one we are perhaps all familiar with, uh, as um, um, uh, written on the uh, preface of uh, the first Whole Earth Catalog, and Stuart Brand, the genius who developed the whole idea, said it. We are as gods, so we might as well get good at it. Thank you. <laughs>